Fun, say what's up? What is up? What is you, up? You literally scheduled it to 6:15. So 6:15 p.m. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that got the time. <laughs> the time a little a little wrong. Wow, right that's like hardcore Hispanic uh, hey. time. <laughs> All I've had today. Actually, I had breakfast, but now I've had so much coffee today. I'm like, God, I need to eat. I All need right. to do something. Have any? What's up, eight. everybody, dude? Fuzzy, you're, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, your your setup. Uh... <laughs> it, 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 it has a lot to just desire. Leave it, just leave it like that. Just and I'm like, it like it's so crooked today. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is so crooked. The ca- the, I feel like the camera on the TV is no, crooked. No, no, well. But you know, I'll show you how it's done. I it's okay. Just, but hey, hey, uh, this is it. What what are you doing? No, leave it like it was. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to say thank you. I appreciate you what you've done because you know traffic today was insane. Weather is not the best here in Jacksonville, Florida today. But we're ready to rock and roll. We have an incredible guest today. So ignore oh, yeah. the ignore the crookedness, which by the way is, there's is not crooked. Uh, and then just pay attention to the golden boulders that are about to be dropped in this thing. So. Uh, I'm ready, Fonzie. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, I I don't see you ready. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm crafting some some dark. I was gonna say dark, some dark magic, dark but magic. no, some some cool magic in here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, All right, there we go. Well, ready or not, here we go. Oh, 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 that's it. There we go. There we go. Hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. Where we talk about entrepreneurship, mindset, and of course, how to turn your content into profit. Let's go. But most importantly, we are here to have a good time with you. So go ahead, go to contentsprofit.com and join the community. I saved your booty today. I think it sounds better when you say it. I think that we're going to have to change the color of that. And and I think you're going to take over that part. I just approved my my own trial out here for yeah the, yeah for that the was intro. good you good you job, passed Fons. you passed I the passed. test <laughs> hey uh what are we talking about today Ooh, today we have a very cool guest but honestly i'm very excited about today's topic because it's i feel that it's an area and i might be giving away here for the for the guest right he he might <laughs> he might pray on us after i say this but sales is an area where we definitely need improvement and today's guest is the master of sales Yes, so we're going to be talking all about podcasting, sales, and consistent content. That sounds like Ooh. this to me. Hold on. There you go. Yes, that yeah. sounds exactly like money falling out of the he- out of out of heavens. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Fast and furious, and guys, if you need a daily content team, a plug-in daily content team, just let us know. We'll slide into those DMs. There's a little bit more to that, absolutely. But if that sparks curiosity, let us know because that's what we do. That's what our team does really, really well. So we're happy to help you and put you in the right direction. Also, go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting fl- platform and at Base Bros Go. You were going to say platform. Platform. <laughs> platform. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is right, guys. And if today's guest help you, you move one step closer to your goal please don't forget to share this episode with three friends remember that is your ticket of admission and and don't forget to leave a five-star review thank That's you That's right baby it's friday and you know it today we have a great friend that we met at an incredible event in montana that is right today's guest let me tell you he is the absolute beast at following up and we're going to be talking all about sales today he is the host of the 150k podcast which i totally recommend you go check it out guys please welcome the host of the 150k podcast master shifu of sales (laughs) the one and only joe graham what's up joe hey how's it going guys (laughs) pretty good pretty good i gotta i gotta Put your volume up in here a little bit so people get to hear your your awesome voice. <laughs> appreciate that, man. Appreciate it. Joe, thank you so much for, for obviously coming onto the show and be here with us. When we met you in Montana, it was like instant like brotherhood, first of all. And then uh, you know, we've been we've been trying to get on your show. It's just really hard to get on your show, man. You're just that popular. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, you know what? Let's just bring him in here because there's a lot of uh information that I personally need to know. And then I think this guy over here needs I, to know too. You know, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna be honest here, man. Joe. Like we knew we wanted to bring you on the podcast 
yes, we've been like back and forth, you know, trying to figure something out. But the over 200 guests that we've had, you've had the best follow up game mm -hmm. in history of <laughs> mankind, man. Like, you're like, hey, man, yeah, let's, I'm just checking in, you know, like politely, like, When are we going to do this, right? We're going to take care of business. When are we going to go deliver some value to everybody? And that really caused a great experience. I was like, this is absolutely amazing. I love it, Joe. So I'm very happy, first of all, very excited and very grateful that you're here today with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. And honestly, that's the biggest secret of sales I have. I just keep talking to people until they say yes. <laughs> yeah, there's other nice. stuff you can do but that that right there if you can just follow up and not make the person upset you're yeah. very good hey so, that's it guys we're done with the episode guys, <laughs> yeah, they, they, there we go here that was a golden boulder moment okay yeah. so we can we can dive right in and you know then we'll share a little bit of your story but like this is perfect because you know right now we're working with a company right and a lot of a lot of the day-to-day -day operations that we're helping me them go through on top of like building the whole system is on the sales side of things, right? So they have like a front desk position and, you know, we have to be reaching out and talking to people and just see what they are, right? And that they're in charge of selling a type of membership, right? Mm -hmm. And the number one objection that we get on that set of things, and even with shows like this, people are like, oh man, like how do I get my dream guests in here? At the end of the day, we're We're selling something, right? We're selling an experience, whether that's a we're selling the spotlight. Exactly. Whether that's like <laughs> a, a time transaction or a, or a money transaction, right? And it's like, well, they're not responding to me. Like, I don't know. Should I continue to follow up, right? Like, how do how do how do you discover that? Was this like natural to you, or like what was that learning process? And what's some advice that you can tell to people that maybe are finding some friction in the follow up? Oh, sure. And it wasn't natural in the beginning. In the beginning, I was like anyone that got into sales. I had no idea what I was doing. And <laughs> I just begged people to buy. But as you go along, you find out sales is relationship and relationship building. And so when I switched it from what they can do for me to what I can do for them, mm -hmm. that's where I was able to start actually getting those doors open. So when I would reach out and wouldn't be, hey, you know what, Luis, can you guys be on my show? It would be like, hey, what are you guys doing today? And I would start the conversation and I would just make connections with them. And if I found out, oh, you guys like soccer, great. You know what? Or football, sorry. Here yes, go. let's go. You call it football, <laughs> I, I know. But you know, you like that. I would connect with you on what you like. Now yeah. we're getting a relationship so that when I said, hey, do you want to be on my show later on? It's like, oh man, I like this guy. It's hard to say no. So that's like mm -hmm. the first little step. Ooh, the so second good. is just make sure you're making it about them. So if you have to get mm -hmm. someone in, I like say a membership thing to a gym or whatever it is, don't form it like you want to get into membership. Talk about their health, what they need, what mm -hmm. is going to get their hot button. Because that way you're already starting to get in and then you just find out little bits of information about them. Yeah. And then you can follow up and have a reason to follow up. I think most people are scared about following up mm -hmm. because they don't have a reason to follow up besides, hey, can you do something for me? You got to make the follow-up be about them. Ooh. I, okay, so like, I think this is a very important part right here. At least it resonates a lot with me, making the follow-up about them. How do we make the follow-up about them? I feel most people, you know, feel, fit in the category, right? And most people are not, you know, masters at something. So obviously majority are going to fall in this bucket of making the follow-up about them. Like, hey, let's have a chat, right? Like, what have you made a decision about this thing that we talked before, how do we go about crafting a follow-up in terms of, mm -hmm. we like to say whiffed, right? What's in it for them? Mm -hmm. How do we craft it in that way that they have no other choice, but they, they, they feel no other choice than getting back to you? Right. Well, like, cause like I started my podcast, we'll use this. This is easy for me. I started my podcast out in June. Like I had had done no podcasting. Now I just released episode 55 and I had to start oh, hold, out. Hold, hold, hold. It, it, it has to be celebrated. <laughs> it, I have to, studio clap. Thank you. Studio Thank clap. You. But I started out just having to be like, okay, cool. Who do I know in my sphere that I can talk to? And at first I was scared. But yeah. then after I did a couple of them, got it, you know, the understanding of, you know, the process I wanted to do with it. Then I started going, okay, who in my sphere wants to have more influence? So then I would reach out to them and I was like, I had a buddy named Pedro and I'm like, Hey, Pedro, would you be on my podcast? One, I know he had a podcast, so maybe in the future he'd let me be on his, but two, he would be comfortable in this environment 
And it was something that, you know, connected with him. And that's the biggest thing in sales. It doesn't have to be podcasting. It can be selling a product. It could be selling soccer balls or footballs or whatever. You just have to find a way to, you actually put have to put the work in. Too many yeah. times people don't want to do that. They want to just say, hey, buy my stuff. Um, and in reality, you got to just, it's like dating. I'm Now I'm just thinking it through my head. <laughs> With yeah. a girl, you don't just go up to a girl, and I'll keep it as PG. You don't just go up to a girl and say, hey, let's do this. Yeah. You're like, hey, do you want to go out on a date? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And you build the relationship. Yeah. And well, that's the thing that well, most people, unless, no, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, well, some not, of us are not as good looking <laughs> as others, so we have to use more skin. Yeah, no some worries. people don't have your beard, bro. I'm saying I'm totally joking in here. <laughs> I do have to put in the work too. Um, but I don't put in the work anymore because I have a girlfriend. Babe, I'm sorry if you're, li if you're listening to this. It was just a joke. I promise it was just a joke. Uh, sorry, Joe, for interrupting you. So you were saying. Oh, well, no, no. It's just, it's a good analogy. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. No, I mean, I was just, uh, you know, I've been very into NFTs and like trying to find, l learn a little bit more about it and like the Web3 and all this stuff, right? Craziness. That sounds crazy mm -hmm. right now. And there's people that are like, I don't really believe this. And, not, and uh, just yesterday I was listening to an interview with Gary Vee, right? And he's like, look, so many people are so focused on the short term, right? Yeah. Whether that's uh, like an influencer, for example, this guy was asking him about like, look, if somebody comes in and offers me a hundred grand to like promote this NFT, right? But I don't really understand it, right? Like that's very short, like, should I take it? Should I not, right? People that might be like waiting for like that money, right? Maybe that's a lifetime opportunity. But what Gary was saying is like, look, a lot of people are just so focused on the short term gains that yes, you might grab that hundred grand, like if you're needing uh, mm -hmm. those hundred grand, but like, what is, what are you, what are you uh, canceling in the future, right? You yeah. are risking your future wealth. Like you're canceling your access to many people that might provide opportunities to you, right? So in the sales side of things, right? It's very similar. It's like, look, like, am I actually burning this relationship because I'm asking way too soon because I'm not giving, right? I'm not serving, right? Is that the risk I'm going to take? And, and in my personal experience, once I started seeing it that way, I'm like, wow, like this, am I, am I, am I might be okay by delaying the ask Mm -hmm. to be able to build this relationship and be okay with that relationship because in the future that might be that might mean so much more right so we just had a, a, a like legit an example from like yesterday right we've been talking to this uh agency that we're about to partner with for what six seven months it's been a, it's been a while uh so and then just yesterday we received an email like guys we're ready Right. Yep. And we're like, we're ready to rock and roll. And it's it not just them. It's like them and they have access to incredible people that we could serve as well. Right. And it, that would have been like an ask, maybe like a month one, but it will burn that opportunity moving forward. Right. So with that said, understanding that it's a long term thing that we have to put in the work. Right. How do we start building the consistency on these follow-ups on this relationship building can we systematize it like what is your experience in building this because you know we have to have some wiggle room at that point until those deals or those partnerships start you know uh happening right so what what will be your advice in that in that that part yeah sure and I do long-term sales. So mm. in my day job, because I still have a day job as well, I work for cor in corporate America, I do multi-year contracts. So I have to yes. develop relationships with people that are dealing with contracts. And maybe when I first meet them, they're two years out. So I have to set you know little points along the way, which I'll do like in my Outlook or whatever, just yeah. like touch points for it. Um, yeah. And I'm more about long-term relationship anyway. Because if you establish a relationship, even if you can't sell them, they have friends that you want to get and connect with. So I've done stuff that a lot of people are like, what? I actually recommend if you can't help solve the problem, but you know someone that can, refer them. Because yeah. what will happen is, is once you do that, now we're friends. Joe just did something for me that had nothing to do with him. He didn't benefit from it, but he mm -hmm. hooked me up. So now when you have a friend that needs what I have, you're going to bring it back to me. And then just building that relationship, every relationship's so different. Like I've gone two, three years on one deal, but it was like a, for my company, they made 250000 a year off of it. And it's a three-year contract. So that's what, $750,000. So three wow. years to bring it in your company, $750,000 is not a bad deal. You know, it's just, yeah. I think people want the short term instead of the long term building wealth. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That 
I'm curious, like what you said the deal was 750K. Is that the average of the deals that you deal yeah, with? Yeah, so like for, depending on what I'm selling. So I've been doing sales over the phone for the past 15 years. So wow. I used to do oil and gas investments, which was around 100,000 a pop. You had mm -hmm. to pay 100,000 to get in, normal. Uh, with what I'm doing right now, it's multi-year contract. So on average, the deals, and I get paid off the monthly, but the deal on average is anywhere from 35,000 for the company up to... 250, 375,000 per deal. Wow. So like I sold $50,000 worth of revenue for the company last year, but that 50,000 is $50,000 each month that the company's yeah. making. Now I didn't get paid 50,000 each month. That would be great. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. that, that's that kind of the thing. So yeah, people, what people really get confused is money is a made up number. And I use this example, but it's so true. Mm. This is an iPhone. I oh, that's my daughter on there. She's cute. Oh, okay. had to, to do little, it popped up. Um, yeah. But I paid a grand for the iPhone, right? My wife hates iPhone. She won't pay a dollar <laughs> for it, but she'll pay a grand for a Samsung 22 or whatever they have. It's just the value you put with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I love this. I I, I really want to dive deeper into you know, kind of like. The, 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 the core of sales and what you're talking about. You know, I read this book from um, Peter Thiel. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Mm -mm. Uh, he's one of the co-founders of PayPal, if I'm not mistaken. He's like up there with Elon Musk, this guy. Oh, nice. You know, no, I haven't read it. Yeah, so very high performance guy. And in his book, Zero, Zero to One, he talks about sales being the, the heart of any business mm -hmm. right i mean if you don't sell you don't exist pretty much right <laughs> yeah. but the thing is like a lot of people go into business just thinking oh if i just follow my passion like it's gonna work out right and then you start <laughs> you know working on your craft and working on your on on how you're gonna fulfill people and then you're like well but i don't have anybody to serve well it's because you haven't done sales right you have not sell anything to anybody and honestly, to some point, I feel like we were there at the beginning where yeah. we were just working on like, oh, what are we going to sell this? We're going to let's work on our skills of fulfillment. No, what are we going to sell? What are we going to do? That exactly. was the question. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, uh, yeah, that's right. It's not what I, what I was going to sell, but what are we going to do? Yeah. And we just were working on our skills. Let's work on, you know, learning how to build funnels or how to edit video, et cetera. And we totally neglected sales, right? Deep inside, we knew we needed to sell, but I think it's something that people just because it's uncomfortable at first, people just put it, you know, aside. Yeah. Now, I heard in one of your podcasts that you love working with people from zero to 400, right? Mm -hmm. That is like your sweet spot. Yep. And I'm curious, right? Like, cause it takes a change of mindset to get from, from that point, right? From nothing to consistently drive sales inside of your business. So what yeah. would you say is that mindset shift that we need? And I'm not saying we're gonna start closing, you know, 250 grand of deals. Why not? Right? Why not? I mean, no. Why, yeah, exactly. Why <laughs> I not? I mean, you can. You can. Yeah, you can. You can. I'm, not, I'm not saying like overnight. Just, right. He doesn't let me, you know, fin finish my sentence. Uh, but what is that change of mindset that you need to start going into? I feel comfortable now with making a 10K offer, 20K mm -hmm. offer, right? 30K yeah, offer. It, and it, it really, the, the number is irrelevant. It's the value you bring. Mm. But the biggest thing I see coaches, entrepreneurs, uh, even salespeople, because I train a lot of B2B salespeople as well, is their mindset, because Hollywood and movies and all make it look like the sales is icky or slimy or they're taking advantage of you. But if you can reshift that thought process to I'm solving a problem for them, I'm helping them, it takes away the Ickiness. Because like you said, you were content creators. You're making all these really cool stuff that people want, but you didn't know how mm -hmm. to sell it to them because something in here was like, I don't know if this feels right. What do I charge? Well, when you're bringing someone value and you're helping them meet a need, the yeah. money will come because here's a dirty little secret most people don't know. Money is not really the biggest factor in a sale period. It's about 5%. If you give them enough value, if you take care of their need, if you show them how you can make them money, if you can help them with their processes so that they can duplicate what they're doing over and over again, they'll pay you. And then you can have a 10K offer or a 20K offer or a 5K offer, depending yeah. on what demographic you're wanting to, to you know, touch with. Yeah. I, uh, I, I just had like an interaction earlier uh, with this guy 
uh, he has, he's an engineer, right? He has like this, this business or he, he works, he has a nine to five, but also he has a company on the side that they're doing like a B2B side and then a consumer side on mm -hmm. 3D printers, right? And I, I thought it was fascinating, right? He has this whole remote team and we're talking about it. And, uh, you know, we've said on the show that we use our podcast as a, as a leverage tool to part of this process that we're talking about, right? Like it's full mm -hmm. transparency. It's like, look, this is a very high quality point of contact with the people that we really want to connect and move our relationships forward, right? And he's like, but what's your audience and like the fans and the subscribers? And I'm like, we honestly, like we cannot see it some days, but it was like, it's, that's not the priority at all. Eventually with consistency and time that will come, right? And mm -hmm. then it will have a place. But at the time, like really the focus is like, who are we bringing? What's the relationship? Like, how can we serve each other? How can we find the connection points? Because at the end of the day, that's literally what has fed the business in the last two years. And it has been an incredible experience. Now, this guy, like we're trying to explain like the, the front end of the show, the back end of the show, like, and um, he, he came to, to me and I and a, a conversation that I had not so long ago with this guy that they auction commercial real estate, right? So mm -hmm. they came to us as a referral over somebody uh, and we were having this conversation. And I'm like, okay, like, how do you, um, how do you sell? Like, what's your marketing strategy? It's been word of mouth for the last 20 years, right? They have, they built enough nice. relationships that they can do yep. that, right? Incredible. Now they're at a point where like, okay, can we start like looking at different options? COVID happened. They cannot go on site anymore. Like this was last year, right? I'm like, okay, well here, here's our framework. This is what we do for our industry. This is what we've done, right? We've done at the time, I think it was like over six figures in sales, right? For a service provider but here's the application to you, right? And we started going about like what it meant to him. And I'm like, okay, look, out of 10, out of 10 very high quality conversations with people that you know, they might move forward, right? What's, what do you think you might close out of that, right? And he's like, well, out of 10, I think three people might be like a really good, really good number for us, right? I'm like, awesome, okay. Uh, what if I tell you if you can have 52 opportunities, once per week, right? 52 opportunities in one year, right? That's what, let's say we round up 50, uh, 50 people. So five times three was that 15, mm -hmm. 15 sales, right? Good job. It, let's go. No, we don't do public math, but I'm doing public math today. Uh, 15 sales, right? One of those sales for them can be anywhere from $500,000 to millions of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So for him, that system is very valuable, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, the conversation continued, right? And we're like, okay, well, the service that we provide provides all that support for your type of company, right? Now, my value is based on what they can do, right? Well, full disclosure, we we don't work with them because their their building got blown up by the hurricane. They're all okay. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, they're all okay, but they're rebuilding yeah. the whole the whole Shaban. That was like, uh, what's the area? Um, the I don't know. New Orleans, New Orleans. That was last mm -hmm. year. So you know. Gratefully, they're okay. But for them, this is a really good example because for those service providers, I think those are really good questions to ask because then the value is based on what they can say. So I'm like, look, okay, if this costs, let's say, 100 grand a year, is it worth for you those 52 opportunities that you told me that you can close 15 of those that are worth millions of dollars? Yeah. The answer is going to be like, yes. yes. Sounds yeah. good. Let's get cracking, right? So I, I think that's such a cool, and, uh, you know, we've, I think this is the first time Fonzie listens this side of the story, the way that we're telling it. Mm -hmm. And as I was telling this, I'm like, huh, this is pretty interesting. And the guy I was selling them th this thing, he sells like these massive 3D printers. You could see in his eyes, the light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh my gosh, can, can we have coffee? Can we talk more? I'm like, absolutely, freaking Lutely, let's talk more, right? So mm -hmm. I think to your point is that's so important, right? Like what, we, what you just explained it's okay. What is the value to that person that that we're that we're encountering? So, what are some ways that you've seen or that you probably do today to bring that value forward from their point of view? Mm -hmm. Well, you actually brought one up. I know my numbers. So, like with their sales process, and I train this a lot more with one-on-one -on -one coaching with like people that I do it with. I find okay, how many people do you need to talk to? And I always use the example of a hundred. So if you talk to a hundred people to get ten people interested, that you actually get to talk to five, and you close two, then you know you need to make a hundred contacts a day, mm -hmm. and then you know what the value is. Like with your example there, you know their ticket value is a lot higher. A lot of people's Absolutely. ticket values is going to be a little bit lower depending what industry they're Absolutely. in. Absolutely, yeah. but know your numbers. And then know what it is in your industry that is a hot ticket for them. So like if I'm selling fitness, I'm going to know, you know, is it this supplement that I want to use? Is it 
this workout that's working best, whatever that is for them, because all you're doing is touching their pain point. Um, mm. I know some people might feel bad about this, but they're going to buy from someone else if they don't buy from you. So find their pain point or find their heart, what they love. Honestly, most of the time people will move off of pain more than off of love. The people oh, yeah. that move off of love and excitement about something are probably about 5%. Yeah. The 95% are like they're tired of either living a certain way or not having the sales come in or not having what they need. So you find their pain point, you show them their numbers and success. Our good friend George says this all the time. Success is boring. I give him credit on it because I use this line all the time. Yeah. It's just with my sales process, I repeat the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Now, I will talk better. I'll change it up. I'll get better lines or whatever, but I'm still making 100 calls or 200 calls a day. I'm still doing email marketing. I'm still doing my follow-up, which I have scheduled times to follow up. That's something I didn't mention before. Let me go back yeah. to that. I don't just randomly follow up all the time. Now, sometimes like, you know, if it's just a close relationship, I will, but I will literally tell them, hey, Luis, you know what? You're interested in this. Is it okay if I call you back on Tuesday? Do you want me to call you at one or two? What works better for you? And if they push back, I'm like, hey, man, I'm just trying to help you and meet your time frame. But if I don't schedule this, I'm pretty busy too. I don't want to miss you. Again, I'm always reframing it back yeah. toward them. Mm. I want to go back to that because it's not just follow up and being the you know annoying little kid that's like, or the annoying guy like, do you want to go on a date? It's yeah. not that. It's more of setting it to where they agree with you for that follow-up because then they're going to feel more likely to actually respond. Or if they can't, they'll email you back, go, Hey man, I'm sorry. I missed it. But can we talk now? Yeah. Yeah. This is gold right here, guys. Uh, repeat this section about three minutes, minute 22, go back, listen to it, grab pen and paper, take notes. This is golden, golden boulder, golden boulder mo moment, golden boulder moment. Thank you, Joe. Um, I, I, I want to go back to something that you said earlier, right? Like people, are scared to the follow-up, right? They're like, okay, you know, I, I finally got this person interested in what I'm doing. I ha I'm having this call. Maybe they cancel the call and they're like, okay, what well now? Like, it's probably that unknown unknown thing, right? And mm -hmm. one of the things that, you know, I personally had to repeat to myself a ton when we were starting, right? Because, well, first of all, we have to prove a concept. It, it is proved now from you know, the people, ourselves and the people that we've proven, proven, proved, uh, did I say proved? Yeah. My English is, is proof, not, not very good. I looking. don't know. <laughs> it works. That's what it works. Works. It works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe was smiling. English uh, 101 over English here. English 101. Yes. Uh, if we can do it in, in, with our accent, you can do it as well. Um, anyways. So, yeah. but it was like, okay, I have to believe the first thing that my solution, it, it works and it works mm -hmm. great. And we're going to do a hundred percent of that. Right. So I think, uh, for us, because we sell our own product, it works. But then when somebody else is selling that, like somebody else's product, right? That's when that belief and that conflict is. We've seen it, you know, I came from the fitness industry, right? So I had a team of like 15 and I was like, you are not allowed to work here, right? Selling these memberships. If you do not do the workouts at least mm -hmm. three times a week, right? Because if you do not like it, you're not going to be able to it. talk about it. Right? So in that case with fitness, it worked. Now, you know, with, for us, we are the living proof of our product, right? Like we do this 24 seven. That's exactly what we do now. What are maybe like people listening, you know, they might be in a company selling for somebody else or producing content for somebody else. Like what is your advice to those people that are doing it for somebody else? Sure. Uh, first and foremost, believe in their product and their solution. If you don't change jobs, Flat out, because as a salesperson, I've literally changed jobs. I was making good money, but I didn't believe in the solution. So like I was doing oil and gas. And when I realized that they weren't getting the return on their money, because when I started the job and this, I mean, some people like doing this, it's a super high risk thing. And I thought, oh, well, they, they're getting wells. I hear it. Right. And then I found yeah. out it's like one out of a hundred wells and my ability to sell in that industry wasn't there anymore because I didn't believe what was being delivered to where mm. what I'm doing now. I have a whole team behind me. I'm like, hey, you know, if you sign up with me, I have a project manager that's going to take care of it. And then that certainty comes back. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention, because you mentioned people being kind of like nervous about following up if they didn't answer. You need to remember it's not about you. It's yeah. about the value, the service, the product that you're bringing. It might be their dog died that day. It might be that their boss yelled at them and they just didn't want to take another call or they had something else come up. It's not always they're mad at you, but. I think the human mind, we think, oh, it's they're mm. mad at me. And in reality, everyone has so many other outside factors. Yeah. Just reach back out and then just um, 
like until someone tells me a flat out hard no, yes. I would just keep talking to them, being nice to them, finding a new way in, being like, okay, cool. Is this really going to work for you? Like I will find a way. Either you're going to say, yes, let's talk again. Yes, let's sign up and let's do this. Or no, leave me alone. But I'm not going to allow them to just leave me in the vague mode because now I'm going to be worried over here, tripping out, going, did I do something wrong? Did they like me? Are they going to move forward? Instead of, I'd rather have a no. And like yeah, I'll yeah. tell people that. If you're really nervous about a deal, I will look and say, hey, Luis, is this something that you don't want to do right now? If not, that's cool. I can take a no. I'm just trying to help you. Again, I'm reframing it back to them. Yeah, yeah. Instead of that, I don't like being held in limbo. Limbo is not good. Yeah. With that, what, what is uh, what, wait, hold, wait, on, wait, hold on? Hold on. Hold on. Ah. I, I have to, like, <laughs> no, you do this to me all the time. Okay. Uh, what is the power of no? Right. Because like when you start, a lot of people are really scared of, oh my gosh, you're going to say no. Right. What is it, it took us a while to understand it in our, in our, I think I have my own answer, but I really want to hear it from you. It's like, what is the power of no? Yeah, I've learned it now, but I'm going to tell you a funny story because it goes yes. along. When I first did my sales job, I was doing roofing windows and siding, and I was selling a gutter job. It wasn't even that expensive. It was like 2400 bucks to do this whole big house. It was my first time I had to do a presentation in front of people. And, you know, like I'm really certain now. I was so nervous. I was halfway through the presentation, and my boss was with me. I looked at the guy and go, I can't do this. I can't do it. Like I literally freaked out in the, in like, the middle of the presentation, right in his house. And the guy looks at me and goes, bro, I'm going to buy anyway. I like, cause I was working for Home Depot. I like Home Depot. You're good. And he <laughs> literally sold it for me. And after that point, I was like, okay, cool. It's yeah. not about me. I was just tripping out for whatever reason. Yeah. But to get past no, or that, that certainty of no, you have to just get into the fight enough. My old boss used to say, or my old salesman used to say, you have to get bloodied with it. Meaning mm -hmm. that you had to just keep doing it over and over and over again. You said, you mentioned that I'm a sales master. You know how many times I've been told no over the last 15 years? Yeah. It's like a normal thing. And then also, I didn't forget what you said. The power of no is a takeaway you can use in the sales process. Because I believe that's more the question you were asking me. Sorry. Um, it's a takeaway in the sales process so that it takes the power of Grant Cardone does talk about this. You you just hit the monkey in the room or the elephant in the room and say, hey, you're worried about this. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. Well, now you've just said no before they could say no. So now that whole power is gone. Or if there's a problem, and I know I'm going to a little change here, but if there's a problem in the solution that you're giving them, don't hide it. Attack it. Mention mm -hmm. it. Yeah, you know what, Luis? I think you're worried about X, Y, Z. Is that correct? And then now it's not, uh, oh, crap, is he going to mention this? It's now I've yeah. addressed it and you're showing confidence. That's that. Those two go together. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's like when Fonsi did this, uh, his breakdown moves in the conference and uh, on the, <laughs> in the karaoke night. And all he did, when he... <laughs> When he stepped on stage, dude, I did, I did them at the Montana event too. I my, know that too. Well, yeah, my that's awful, right. my awful breakdancing uh, skills. Yeah, he it's got still he better got, than mine. I cannot you know, handle it. like this. <laughs> yeah, people were like, "Whoa, <laughs> yeah!" But he, he he addressed. Yeah, exactly. And that that's an example. Like that's a physical example, but literally mentally, that's exactly what happens in those rooms, right? In those conversations, those meetings. Awesome. I love yeah. them. Man, I'm, this is this goes hand in hand with something a thought process i had the other day i was actually telling my brother right and you said you just want a decision whether that is yes or no right mm -hmm. and yeah. a while back i was listening to this sales training where the person was saying that's your your job is to make is to get the other person to take a decision right mm -hmm. whether that is yes or no the caveat here is that it's about that person making the best decision for them. Your job is not to, like you said, make the best decision for you and your company, which obviously it would be for them to buy. But which, honestly, I, I take that back. Yeah. It won't because if you don't have a good client, it won't be good for your business, right? But that is the thing. It's like your whole job is to help them make that decision, right? that is the best for them. So if you don't see them, this ties a lot with a lot of the stuff that you mentioned early, earlier, right? If they're not a good fit, just refer them to somebody else. Hey, mm -hmm. you know what? It's not a good opportunity for us to work together. This person can actually help you out. Go talk to them, right? Yeah. You're helping them make that decision. Yeah. And then tying this to what you were talking about, having certainty in the product, right? Like believing in the product. 
now I see a clear tide between sales and morals and values, right? Oh, because yeah. like you said, is and, and I think that's the issue right there. That's why people feel sketchy or so icky, right? Is because they're probably selling something they don't really believe in. Mm -hmm. And, and it, the, then you feel icky because it's like, I'm actually making the other person, you know, spend their hard earned money for something that I know is not going to give them happiness. Let's just put it that way, right? That is not going to give them the benefit that they want. And that's when you feel icky, right? Mm -hmm. So tying this is like, man, this is perfect because then if you feel icky in your own business, selling stuff, maybe you got to take a look inside of your processes and your services or whatever and say, okay, how can we better this that we're doing, right? Very, very important. So thank you so much for sharing about that. I, I do want to keep talking about sales a lot, mm -hmm. um, but I do want to transition to a little bit into your, your podcasting journey. And, and obviously, by the way, you were the only one that finished the 45 Live. So oh, let's go. Uh, we're going to talk about that too. But my last sales question, I don't know if my brother has another one. I'm extremely curious of how does your CRM looks like? <laughs> oh, well, here's the thing. So for my corporate job, we use Salesforce. It's already set up for me. Um, for my sales coaching, I just started it. So I use Outlook. Um, mm -hmm. And then I just keep track in my email for Outlook for the, like the CRM with that. Um, I'm really low tech with that part, to be honest with you. But yeah. I do want to say one other thing because you, you perked my mind on it. You were talking about feeling icky, but you mentioned something that I really like. I tell people this, like if you're ethical, if you're moral and you have their best interests in heart, I'll work with you. If you're not and you're just wanting to sell them, I won't. Like I literally like I thought you were like reciting a live I did from a couple months ago when I was like, <laughs> I'm, you're ethical, you're moral, you're good. You don't have to feel bad about yourself because you're taking care of your customer. So I wanted to just pop that in. Yeah. Uh, CRMs, sure. again, mine's still fairly new. So I use Outlook. Yeah. What, uh, <laughs> is, is there a framework that you follow to build it? Because like, I remember a few months ago, you know, we're debating, well, like most people do at the very beginning, debating on the tool, right? Are we going to use HubSpot or Notion or whatever crap, like it's out there, right? Like, and it's like, we had somebody, one of our like dear mentors, like shout out to Jerry. He's like, dude, doesn't matter. The best CRM is the one that you use. Yeah, there you go. the one that you yep, use, that's right? That's what so, I was going to say. Yep. Exactly. So it's like, okay. I'm then, just going to sell that for, so I'm interrupting you, but I'm just going to throw this service idea or product idea for <laughs> you know for whoever wants to take it and execute it do a crm audit and clean up literally sell people like hey Ooh. i'll come in clean your crm help you out you know <laughs> figuring out your cadence <laughs> and if you have your stuff in three different places like us that's like then <laughs> we're gonna help you out centralize everything so you can go out there gonna and put, make some gonna stuff. Put some, how, how good is that? that? Yeah, that's great because it's exactly what you need. But here's <laughs> like, here's the thing. I'm going to put this out there. I've been battling for like one tool and then Fancy Shiny Object Syndrome swoops in and he's like, wow, oh, look at this tool, man. It's so nice <laughs> and so beautiful. Can we try it? I'm like, boy, I'm oh just, boy. I, I, I'm just going to say <laughs> this. I think they all have their benefit, <laughs> but I personally have experienced mo most of the benefit with one specific one. Mm -hmm. which actually we still don't use is it's yeah it's not the one that we use but whatever I, I, one you use is the one you need to do exactly <laughs> thank exactly. you yeah thank you i really appreciate you saying that again to to our faces <laughs> uh 100% but the homework for Fonzie this week has been cleaning up uh the hot deals pipeline that we have uh so i don't know how's that going but uh on my side it's going it's going it's, it's, it's going <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, let, let's transition a little bit here to some of the, the content meat. Uh, tell us a little bit about your journey with podcasting, right? You decided to dive into, you know, building your own coaching business mm -hmm. and you started your 150K podcast, which now you have 55 episodes. Congrats. That is absolutely amazing. And... <laughs> I'm here. This is a Got shout out. Please go follow him and listen to his podcast. He knows how to communicate great ideas in a very simple way. So I totally recommend it. Now, share a little bit about that experience. Why did you decide to start a podcast, right? And how has it gone so far? And has it paid off in a way? Mm -hmm. 
and first, thank you. Like, thank you for the shout out there and all. Um, you know what I really did? Like, literally, I started the whole idea behind the 150K podcast is most people in the U.S. don't make over 100K. They don't. Their average income is 68. Together, 30% of the in the U.S. make over 30K or make over 100K. 30%. So wow. I've been making over 100K for the past few years. And I realized once I got over that hump, I could, <clears throat> excuse me, I could take my kids to Disney and not feel worried about it. I didn't have to worry about the bills. I didn't have to worry about the other stuff. And I'm like, you know what? It would be great because I have a big network. If I brought people I know, and it didn't have to be sales, but they have broke that barrier or are in the process of breaking that barrier and give tips and tools and different ideas and stuff. Like you mentioned, Jared, yeah. who's the CEO. He helps companies with that. Different ways to break that barrier. So that's what I thought of doing. So me being just gun ho just do it, I got mm -hmm. an Anchor account, and I just started recording. I scripted the first 10 episodes, which is horrible, because I just had the set questions, and it didn't work for me. And then I ended up, um, you know, just I had a guy named Tracy Brickman on. He goes, hey, you should just ask questions and just let it flow. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, it was great. Yeah. Um, is it hard work? Yeah. I did the first six months, I did two episodes a week. And then this is with working a full-time job. This yeah. is with having a family. This is with doing all stuff. But I found I love it. I love being able to help people. That's why I do it. Um, and then it just transitioned to doing some solo albums or solo albums. Wow, now I'm a rock star. Yeah, let's solo go. Episodes. You are a rock star, Joe. <laughs> you are a rock star. <laughs> solo episodes um, with just simple little sales tips, you know, to kind of, you know, balance it out. Um, it has turned into getting me some, like I've been using it for branding and I have gotten a few clients with it, but I knew that first six months going from just being the rockstar sales guy. Cause I win all the awards, which George jokes with me about to <laughs> transitioning from being a guy online to how do you establish credibility? Well, yeah. the podcast was the easiest way for me to do that. Yeah. And then I got other people that were like, Hey, can you be on my podcast? Hey, can you be on my podcast? Hey, can you be on my podcast? And I actually got the bug from friends of mine who, before I started it, were like, hey, jump on my podcast. They're like, you really should start one of these. And I'm like, me being a simple guy, maybe I should start one of these. So that was kind mm -hmm. of the whole idea behind it. Yeah. Um, it's been fun. It's a lot of work. I've actually recorded yeah. 67. I yeah. do a lot in advance. So like, sorry, 64. I, I, I kind of wrong. So I have a few up in front that way. If I need to take a week off or if my family yeah. and I want to go somewhere, I have it set up. Why, why do you stay consistent with the show? Because like one of the things that uh, people, when they come into our community or into our world, like the, one of the main things, and this is with content in general, right? Like production distribution, like in general, right? For us, the show is our cornerstone. It's our baby. It's a thing. It's never going to go away. Right. It's going to evolve in some shape and form at some point, but it's there. Right. But the the main concern is it tends to be consistency. Like people mm -hmm. struggle to be consistent with the show, and uh, and it's not on the how are you consistent, right? Like uh, the how is easy. The how is like just sit down and do it, right? Uh, and then but but why 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 do you keep being mm -hmm. consistent with it? For me, I want to help people, and there's no pressure with me with the podcast because my day job covers my bills, so mm -hmm. I'm able to come and just share, and it's a good out. So from a personal standpoint. I get to actually bring guests on and learn stuff that I didn't know. People that have skill sets that I didn't know. Like I actually had a guy on that talked to me about Web3 and NFTs. Had no clue about it. And I didn't even know the conversation was going to go that way. But yeah. it just did. And then I'm a pretty, if I commit to something, I just go at it 100%. I don't yes. give myself the excuse. I mean, not that I'm perfect. There are times I mess up, of course. But like I just, I'm a very much, if I'm going to give you my word, I'm going to keep my word. To the point that I said it, or I'm going to say, hey, you know, Fonzie Luis, I can't do it at this point. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I love that. That making that committed choice to do something. Very important. I think nowadays, um, you know, and I feel like I'm in a transition point right now where I'm starting to see it. I'm more aware of this about making committed choices. I think a lot of people are have a very difficult time making choices mm -hmm. on on that, right? For example, oh, should I commit to this 100%? And I don't know if it's because there's many options to do multiple things and people like too many stuff, right? But at the end of the day is, am I going to commit to something long enough to know whether it works or not? And maybe, you know, like, again, the, the, 
the output, the result, it's a lot of subjective, right? For us, it's a great way, again, mm -hmm. to bring new clients, partners, right? Or just increase the value of our network. But yeah. just meeting cool people. Yeah. Like, I think like that's just the, like the value there. I mean, if we never started, we've never been... We would never have been able to go to Montana, for example, which yeah. was our first experience for us. That experience alone is worth in, like an immense amount of mm -hmm. money, yeah. right? So it's like we we go back to value, right? So it's like okay, how do we how do we translate that into into this thing? Is it is at the end of the day, is it worth it? Personally, for us, like internally, for our hearts, I is our heart happy? Yes, perfect. Let's move forward, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you for interrupting me. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, uh, you know I'm always here for you. Um, yeah, exactly that. Or some people, it's a little bit more intrinsic, right? What my brother was just saying right now, my, uh, is my heart happy? Some people just love sharing their message, right? And just mm -hmm. putting their word out there. Um, so it, it's actually funny there. I was scrolling mindlessly through TikTok, you know, one of those, <laughs> one of those times of the day. And it's always 5 p.m. for Fonzie. I saw <laughs> every I, day at 5 p.m. I saw this guy that he posted a video of this older guy, right, playing video games, and he's like, "This guy has been posted for two years. Has been posting for two years videos on, on video games, mm -hmm. and nobody. It, it literally has like two views, right? But he still do it because he." He's just happy he doing it, right? Yep. And then this guy kind of like shouted out on TikTok, like, wow, guys, like this is amazing. Let's make his day. Now the guy, the videos had like over 70,000 views, mm -hmm. something like that. And I was like, dude, that is so cool, you know? But at the end of the day, if he wouldn't have stayed consistent for those two years doing it because he loves it and it was fun for him, yeah. like not, none of that would have happened, right? So obviously there's a lot of questions. Each, each one does it for very different reasons. Um, so I want to invite the listener right right now. Think about it. Why do you want to be consistent publishing? Because if you are doing it just for the sole the, the sole purpose of an external reward, I think is way more difficult to hold on mm -hmm. to it and actually be consistent than you know doing it internally. Yeah. Um, have you have you found like what has been the change on your on your voice ha has it been any kind of like change in your voice confidence like what you're trying to say like I even translating it to your daily life right has there been some kind of change in there um with podcasting and stuff like that yeah or um, publishing, in publishing in general right yeah being consistent like doing the lives was fun for me because i like to talk and it was a <laughs> short little window so like i would give myself like two to five minutes to do a lot that's it because people's nice. attention span, if one person's just talking, isn't as long as if like here we're interacting, we're having fun. It's different. Um, yeah. I've gotten more confident probably with doing the podcast. But then again, nice. I used to talk to and I still do to CEOs, CFOs, people that sometimes people like I go, ooh, they're big. To me, they're just people. And I'm so used to talking in front of people. Mm -hmm. So getting on the camera and talking for me is just normal at this yeah. point. Absolutely. I mean, that confidence just built up over time, right? Is like you said, I don't remember the exact phrase, but it's pretty much putting the reps in mm -hmm. and then it just becomes second nature at one point, right? Now I feel extremely confident and jumping on a podcast and messing up and, you know, laughing and, yep. you know, getting on each other's back, whatever. Before I would be like, dude, like, why are you saying that? And I will start getting like the, the sweaty pits, right? Yep, Super yep, nervous. Yep. <laughs> um, but now I still it doesn't mean that I'm fully comfortable in front of a camera. Like, give me a camera now and tell me to create content in front of, you know, maybe a public place. We got the baby Luca over here today. Say, Hi, Luca. <laughs> hello. Sorry. Baby <laughs> phone out. Can you say hello? <laughs> It's the first <laughs> official appearance of Luca in the podcast. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so, yeah, Joe, what I, what I was saying, right, is if you give me now a camera in a public place and tell me, Okay, do the 45 live now in front of every of all these people. Even if they're not listening to me, it's a whole different environment mm -hmm. and I will I will get nervous then, right? So, I would need to start doing the reps and all that stuff. Actually, this morning, um I was sending a video to a new client that we were we were onboarding and it was a 1 minute video and I had to like step outside of the coffee shop to do it and I like, walk away cuz I was like, man, I cannot 
fully do it as myself in here yet. I yeah. didn't feel that confidence in that place. And I was like, I'm just going to go walk and then I can be loud and, you know, jump like crazy. <laughs> I like walking when I do lives. Like all my lives are a lot of them are walking. The thing that I run into though is, is sometimes I'll be walking in like my neighborhood and the kids will see me and they'll run up and they want to talk or I'm at work and like the smokers and all are outside. You know, like the people that are outside and they're talking and stuff and then I'm watching cars and yeah. But. Yeah. I, I I love that uh, aspect of the live because mm -hmm. we're very connected to that because we literally landed our first big client because of that reason. Mm -hmm. Like we were recording our first like uh, um, 45 live in the studio. Like we will find those spaces that we felt safe. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, the one the one video that resonated was the one that I did exhausted at 11 at night. Yep. Like I didn't care about the light. I was just sharing a story. Right. And that was the one that resonated. Right. And it's crazy. Like the feedback that we get from our show is is on that is like, oh, man, I love when you guys like your English is not the perfect, right? When, mm -hmm. you know, Luca shows up and like we hear the the dog knocking out the, the, the light, right? It just makes us human. So it's become part of the brand. It's become part of us, right? And then now we got to dance. Okay, what is the type of people that we really want to connect with? And we had for the first time, right? The other day we had dances right here on the show. Shout out to, to these guys on Sweetfish Media. And I think it was probably one of the first experiences uh, on his side with a show this way. That was like, we were laughing, with telling a, jokes. With a show this weird. This, yeah, this <laughs> I like weird. it. It's fun. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And you, you also make a lot of fun, right? Yeah. But, but you could tell that he was he was in a different environment for his show. Like he's a lot of B2B, right? And and he can be very formal sometimes. And like for us, if you are going to work with us, you have to resonate with who we are as well, right? Yeah. And I think that's when we find that one client that really stays with us for a long time and that we can communicate like, honestly and the, the way that we do is because of that reason so i'm sure like what you know going back into sales going back into your podcast the reason we resonated a lot with you in montana when we started talking was because of that mm -hmm. so I, I feel like everybody should be empowered right to dive in because there's a light on the other side right and we sometimes don't see it we see a yeah. wall and it's like just just dive in head first and you'll see it's gonna be so worth it yeah be yourself that's the thing those people don't realize. You're your secret sauce. You're the reason people are drawn to you. Don't try to be someone else. Like, I can't act like you guys because I can't dance. I can't <laughs> do certain things. You know what I mean? Like, I have to be me. And when I'm consistently me, I'm going to draw the people that are attracted to wanting to work with me or maybe get help with sales. Just like with you, the people that are drawn to you are because you're being authentic. You're you. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, the energy attracts, you know, that same energy. So that is... Extremely important. Um, I had a question. This is like totally off topic. Well, first of all, I had a comment saying that now I'm like inspired to launch three other podcasts. <laughs> um, and then my, you know, ADHD mind went totally the opposite way back to sales. And I was like, dude, I wonder how Joe, if Joe does cold sales, right? Like, do mm -hmm. you hit people cold? How, how do you do that? Um, I've been doing it for so long. I literally just give them a call and <laughs> I just say, hey. Um, so like, let me think here. It's all good. Literally I'd have their name and like, even with the job I'm doing right now, I have their name and I have a little, when you're doing cold sales, you want to have a script to begin with. That way you don't have to follow it word for word, but that way you know what you're going to say mm -hmm. when you do it. So like, if I was reaching out to you and I was going to sell you something I'd be like, Hey, Fonzie, Joe Graham, real quick, good news. And the reason I do that is because first off, people don't want their time wasted. So real quick. Good news because people don't want bad news. They want good news. So like that's like my opening to almost mm -hmm. anyone I talk to. And then I might go into what I'm going to sell them. But like I'm going to have something quick, a hook, and tell them I'm not going to waste their time. And I'm going to make them happy. And that normally gives me about six seconds to cook to get them to be either in or out. Wow. It actually doesn't sound too different from creating content, right? From creating a, a it video. It totally right? is creating content. You're just creating content on the fly. And then you have to test and try, test and try. And if you get a yeah. gatekeeper, I switch it. So instead of like, hey, Luis, this is Joe Graham. Hey, can you tell me who handles like the internet and phone service? I had Fonzie down. Does he do that? Is there someone else? Now I'm asking a question. I'm not just telling them and people like to help especially gatekeepers this is something i deal with with a lot of people with b2b is gatekeepers lock them down because they just try to bully themselves past the gatekeeper yeah 
Make them your friend. Ask them a question. Say, hey, can you help me? People like to help. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just want to say this. I appreciate that you said my brother was a gatekeeper. Uh, <laughs> that is right. He, he is a gatekeeper, guys. If, if you Custom ever need muscles, if you need to reach me, you can you can send an email to my assistant over here. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, there will not be an email back. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> oh man, uh, dude, I, I I love that. Right? He's like win the gatekeeper and. You know, kind of like going full circle once again to the podcast where we started. This is something that we found out about the value of the spotlight, right? The value of having your own platform. You get to actually keep the gatekeeper of the gatekeeper. It's like, heck yeah, because it's for them, right? You're, hey, I want to bring this person into the show. How can we make that happen, right? Guess what? The gatekeeper is like, heck yeah, right? Because now you're providing the platform, the spotlight for them. Yeah. And it's so much easier to bring people here. Like... We share this story all the time when we're trying to, you know, let people know of the value of podcasting and building relationships. We tell them, hey, out of over 200 guests, only one has ever said no. Mm -hmm. And we reach them out through a different way, right? We leverage one of the guests that, that yep. came that had a really good relationship with them. And then we managed to bring them. And it is absolutely amazing. Like, literally a very few amount of people will say I, no thank you i'm just gonna put this out there like this has to be like a very staggering stack right like uh you know even cold calling like uh getting just in touch with that person like out of 200 i'm, I'm looking at the number time, out, of, out of 239 episodes mm -hmm. which probably around maybe 40 so uh is us alone right between the first ones yeah i think that's too much 30 maybe uh only one person said, like, not even them, the gatekeeper, right? Mm -hmm. Because there was, like, we couldn't find it the way. Yeah. And then... We the were way to the gatekeeper. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was shaved that day. The, the beard didn't do the effect. But <laughs> so, like, and just like, this is the dream, literally, mm -hmm. platform, like, way to be able to have that conversation with the person that's going to make the decision that you can help, you can serve, that you, that you know. So, again, we cannot stress this enough. Yeah. I, I, it sounds too big to be true, to be honest. But we've lived it, right? We never really experienced that. And who's who's coming next week, right? The head of Hotspot Growth? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, we, we just booked the podcast growth. Wait, what is it? Yeah, like the podcast growth person from HubSpot that they just oh, created their, nice. their whole dollar network. dollar company. This mm -hmm. guy's coming, right? So, like, if if we can get somebody like that, like, if, if, if you can get, like, your dream guest, same thing. Like, for everybody out there, it can be possible. So, all the things mm -hmm. that Joe has shared here today, the things that, you know, Fonzie has shared here today, maybe the ones that I've shared here today, <laughs> yeah, put, put them to use, right? I just take that step, believe it's, it's going to happen. Now, Joe, as we wrap up the show, we have a few questions to to wrap it up. Uh, sure. Fuzzy, you want to lead the way? Uh, yeah, sure. Is that because you're trying to find them and <laughs> I, you're going to find them I, in no. there? <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I was looking at the episode. Now. No, but I found yeah. it. I, I, I found no, it. I, I got it now. I got it now. It's my time to shine. Oh, all right. Joe, every time <laughs> a guest comes, we, t we ask for an action point, right? What can we leave the audience with the listener with that they that can help them move one step forward and i know we talk about sales we talk about podcasting so let's i think let's let's make it more about sales we want people to increase the the revenue be able to make more sales and get some momentum sure and this is something we haven't talked about yet time blocking Ooh. Ooh. so i do a lot of sales over the phone you can do this for b2b you can do this for b2c you can do this calling you can do this face to face I have a set schedule. So from 7.30 in the morning, roughly till 9.30, I'm doing emails. Emails and admin. From 9.30 to 11.30, I'm making phone calls. I'm not doing emails. I'm not doing busy work. I'm not being distracted. I'm reaching out to potential clients. From 11.30 to 12.30, boys got to eat. I do lunch. From <laughs> 12.30 to 2.30, I'm doing calls again. And then from 2.30 on, I'm normally doing admin or emails. The reason is, is that you want to be able to touch people when they're available. Depending on your industry, those times can change. But we talked about being consistent. Yeah. I do this four days a week. Friday is a little bit different because it's a different 
animal with different people, but four days a week, that's my schedule. I'm consistent. My team knows, do not ask me questions during these times if I'm reaching out to clients and I'm really super tight on my containers with it. And what I found is that repetitive, repetitive, boring call, call, call has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars because you're just stacking wins. You're getting the prospect, You know, first you're reaching out saying hello. Then you're getting them to do a presentation. Then you're leading them to do the follow-up. Then you're getting them to do the close. Then if they run away from that and you have to overcome objections, you're doing it again. But if you have those windows locked in and you're doing over and over again, just like lifting weights, you get stronger, you get better, but you're putting yourself in a position to win. And that's the key in business, sales, life, whatever you're doing. And so I'm, I didn't used to think I like schedules. I love schedules now because now mm-hmm. I can shrink time. If I can shrink time, I can make more money. Then I can go hang out with the family after four o'clock and not have any worries because I did what I needed to do. Yeah. yeah. And watch Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> Very key. Very key. Uh, this is for me too, by the way. I'm looking at you, but uh, this is for me yeah, too. Yeah, I'm like, what? what's the very key? <laughs> the very key. <laughs> You got to do the thing during the time block. Absolutely. Because like yes. so many times you yes. put the time block in there and then we don't do the thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, for the, we identify with that. That's committed one of the choice. Structure. Committed choice. Committed choice. If you go. put it in the calendar, you're committing to do it. Yeah. By the way, going back, success is boring, right? That's the mm-hmm. thing. It's like commitment to that. At the end of the day, like what's, are we really committed to the thing that we want? It's going to work. It, it's going to work. It's going to be worth it. Uh, are you committed? But remember, <laughs> success is boring, but the good thing about that is when you do all that boring, fun stuff, not fun stuff, you get to go to Hawaii. You get to go yes. on the trips. You get to do all yes. the other fun stuff we were talking about beforehand. Yes. I fund my fun stuff by doing the boring things I need to do consistently every day, yeah. and that's why I win. That's how you win. Like You ask anyone, business, health, whatever – there's stuff that they don't maybe like to do, but they know they need to do, and that's yep. how you win. And then you get to go and do trips and go to Montana and meet great people and do all the fun stuff that way. Absolutely. Yeah. I heard this the other day. It resonated a lot. You cannot get pissed off for the results you didn't get for the for, for big work you didn't do. From the work yep. you didn't do. I almost butchered that. I that's almost. Okay. I o- almost we, totally we messed you. it up. We, we saved you. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Right, Joe, That's why I don't do the show solo. <laughs> <laughs> you did your first show, show, solo, show, solo, solo, solo show, <laughs> solo show on Wednesday. Congrats! I know. Appreciate Good it, job. guys. Go, go tune into that one. Yeah, yeah. After uh, after two years, finally. Literally after two years, <laughs> I did my first solo episode. Um, Joe, last question of the show: uh, Where will you be if you did not publish? Where would I be if I didn't like publish content? Yeah. yeah. If you didn't put um, your, your, if you didn't your, put word your out message there. out there. I would be doing my sales job. I would be still successful in most people's eyes, but I'd probably be sad because like I love to help people. That's like my heart. So helping people get to their dreams, their visions, their plans, what they want to do. Mm. Um, mm. Like I actually, I talked to, our buddy George about this. I'm like, you know what? There was time, you know, cause in this we'll get frustrated with what we're doing. Cause there's work and there's stuff. I'm like, I really don't have to do this. And he just didn't reply back. And then I wrote back a little bit later and go, yeah, you're right. He just gave me the space I needed. I do this because I want to help people. So it, and it was just having to reframe what I wanted yeah. to do. But if I wasn't yeah. doing this, I mean, I would still be doing sales and doing what I did for the past 15 years. I just wouldn't be as fulfilled. Yeah. I love that answer. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. hundred percent honesty. And you know, at the end of the day, like we, we love asking this question because you know, for us, it meant so much like the, it started, not going to lie. It started chasing the money a hundred percent, like, because we're in a very tough position, but it has evolved into a beautiful thing. And my brother wanted to be a TikTok influencer. (laughs) Oh, nice. (laughs) <laughs> um, fun fact. I mean, go go to our TikToks and just like you know, we we literally rock paper scissors to see who was gonna be in those videos, but uh, <laughs> definitely not. Um, but yeah, I mean, it has evolved. So like the show has evolved not only on the visual and the structure of it, but like in inside of us on how we run it, on why we run it. Yeah. So much from the day one that we decided to do this. So uh, incredible. So thank you so much for sharing that answer. Uh, Joe, anything else you wanna add? Well, first of, where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? 
Oh, sure. So you can find me on my podcast, 150K Podcast. It's on Apple, Spotify, anywhere you go with that. If you want to reach out to me, I have a 150K Instagram page. You can go there. I have a 150K group on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn under my name, Joe Graham. You'll see my pretty face. Um, but yeah, you can find me anywhere in those four places. <laughs> I think I almost said three. Love it. Uh, Joe, quick comment here. You're going to have to send me the link of the headphones. I like it. I like the, the sound. <laughs> you know what's crazy? These headphones were my son's gaming headphones that I took because he wasn't using them for the, his computer because he plays the Xbox. This is what I make my money off of. This is my work headphones. I take yes. these to work, put them on. Yes. $30 on Amazon there. I can't yes. say the name of them right. It's like Okanime or Okanime. I'll send <laughs> yeah. you the thing, but I've yeah. had them for three years. I love them. Let, I like him. I like him. Let us tell you, if you are trying to like up your like whatever game, like content wise, go to the gaming industry. They have it figured <laughs> out, right? Mm -hmm. They have it figured out. And again, by the way, full disclosure, you don't need all that. Like it does help a ton. Yeah. But yeah, I, I want to, okay, I need to find a picture of Fonzie the first time that he was trying to do a sales call. He mm -hmm. also started with gaming headphones. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we I still have them. I should, I should try them to see like how they look. They're, they're, they're a little old, so they might not give a good sound, but. But you're, yeah, exactly. So oh, these but, are yeah. three years old. They're still like, hopefully I sound good today. These are like seven, year, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Se seven years but, old. But yeah. I mean, it, I, I remember that story. I actually put them on and I was just like walking <laughs> inside of my room because I had, at that moment we lived in like a seven bedroom apartment uh seven a bedroom apartment like, oh, wow yeah penthouse. where but is this a, a seven bedroom <laughs> house with like a bunch of roommates gotcha and i had like my office in my room so literally i would like get off from my bed take two steps and then sit down in my <laughs> office and do some work so nice. i would put my headphones on and i was like with my mic and i would just like walk back and forth literally getting in the mindset of like i'm gonna call call this restaurant yeah and i'm gonna sell them yeah you can do it fuzzy yeah and then i would call them it's like hello yep. yeah yep. Uh, been there uh, and then i would like freeze it's like okay bye he, he didn't <laughs> he didn't do the hey luis here you know real quick i got good news X. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I wrote it down i'm gonna practice this. you should right. use it it's good I know. I love it. Oh, um, okay. dude, Joe, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. Uh, it, ah, it's, it's so good. There's so many of these. Hold on. There we go. Golden boulders. Yep. Anything else you want to add before we head out? Sure. Love well, chase your dreams and just be you because at the end of the day, you have to live with you and you're the secret sauce to whatever you want to build, dream, go after. And don't worry about what other people think about it. Do what you want to do mm. and the right people will be with you. Let's go. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank Love you it. for having me. I appreciate it, my friends. Man, this was awesome. Did, this did was... you have fun? I mean, but... Oh, dude, I've had a blast. I love this. Like, I could go for another hour or two. I know we don't have that time, and my wife might be coming around my little screen I put we'll, up. We'll but... do part two. We'll do part two for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's it's coming. And then we got we to gotta meet you on your, on your yes, home yes. ground. Yeah, you got to come on my show, then I get to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you won't need to follow up that much for round two, I promise. <laughs> no worries. Yes. All right, Fonzie, anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I'm just thankful. Joe, appreciate you, man, for coming here. This was absolutely amazing. It was a lot of fun. Honestly, I know I said it in the last episode, but I, I get I think this one has been one of the most fun episodes <laughs> we've had uh, had on the 239. I had an absolute blast and we learned a lot. So thank you so much, Joe. With that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite platform and on social media at Base Bros Co. That is right. And if Joe here help you move one step closer to your goal, please, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys. Woohoo! Let's go. That was awesome, Joe. We're still live uh, on the internet. We have a quick tradition. Cool. Yeah. AKA selfie. Selfie time. You know, AKA thank a screenshot. Thank you for hanging out on a Friday with us. Yeah, no worries. Got, wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? Okay. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right. Social media. We'll see you on Monday. Take care. Joe, that was absolutely amazing.